Hi, well, welcome to uh, coming to this video. So my name is Oliver Wright. Um, I am a macro photographer, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to photograph um, one of these guys, one of these robber flies. So um, the specific species that I have been seeing a lot around my local pond. I've been spending a lot more time sort of locally. So this is a this is a stacked image, um, and it's an image I took a few days ago. And this video is going to be in two parts, and it's going to be part of a blog on my website. Um, www.oliverwrightphotography.com um, and the blog is going to have a, a, a lot more images because I've been photographing these guys for about a month now um, and in the video the next bit after this I'm going to be out in the field um, and you will see me basically photographing this image so it's a stacked image you'll see the process I go through um, how tricky it is to set the uh, camera up so it's level with the insect etc and then there's going to be a second part where I take the results from that morning and I put them on my computer and I stack the image so you sort of see the process right from the beginning to the end. I mean I guess there is a, a little bit in the beginning that you don't see in the sense of I'm out walking a dog and it's actually finding these insects so finding these insects and, and maybe I'll do another blog sort of video thing on that at, at some other time um, but finding the insects is also a sort of a very tricky part um, so anyway, well, enjoy, and we will move over to the next section, which is at me out in the field. Cheers. Well, good morning. So I thought I would do a quick little video. Um, basically, I've been doing loads of photographs of these um, little um, little robber flies at my local pond. Um, so I thought I'd sort of show you right from the beginning exactly how I photograph them. So the first stage is I've been walking around with the dog who is just... Um, out of video, if I move that way you might better see it. Yeah, it's just, just at the edge of the video, just there. So uh, we've walked a little way, so she's just sat down chilling out now. And I have found a robber fly which is just here. You're not going to be able to see that, it's just on a piece of grass. So um, I haven't even unpacked the camera bag, I thought I'd sort of show you right from the beginning how I go about doing a stacked photograph of, of one of these tiny little robber flies. So um, yeah, I'm just going to um, talk and photograph at the same time and I'll sort of talk through what I'm doing um, and then we'll get the images back home and we will uh, stack them so you sort of see the full process from uh, beginning to end. So, tripod, little stool, very important, oh, can we see me in the video? Angle it up a little bit more. Yeah, that's better. So, in the bag, so first important item is this thing uh, called a plamp. And what I'm going to do is because I don't know if you can see the grass is moving around a little bit, um, it's just going to stick that on there, and that is going to allow me to uh, sort of pull this grass and tighten everything up a little bit. So my uh, Canon 5D Mark IV um, with the Canon MPE 65, that these are pretty tiny, these flies. So um, I'm probably going to be photographing it at about three times magnification. Um, and the camera is sat on a focus rail. So this one is a Nova Flex Castell L, uh, which I've not had for that long. And then I've got a Benro Mac 3 tripod here and an Enduro 5 way head. So now I was had a once a one to one on a Zoom chat the other day and I was telling the person the most complex thing with stacking is just getting things lined up in the first place. So the, so the robber fly is there, this tripod is currently way too high. So you've got to get everything set up so your camera is the robber fly sort of facing that way so I need the camera to be I need the camera to be here basically um, and getting that into the right position is the most fiddly part of macro photography that is the bit which will take me the longest so I'm just sort of adjusting the tripod getting it to roughly the right height And 
So I sort of want to do this and be as least destructive to the vegetation as possible. So it's getting about right. So let's wind the macro lens to three times magnification. I'm going to put live view on. And I'm just going to sort of get my settings something like just so I can see the robber fly and so now I'm sort of going to gauge it yeah that's that's getting there and I can sort of start I can see the grass on the back there so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the plant so the plant has foam jaws so I can basically put it around the grass and not even damage the grass so I want to be fairly close to the robber fly so this is going to help stabilize it from the wind and also just allow me to adjust where the robber fly is. So yeah, I can see it there. So now I'm using the head to sort of do the fine tuning. And the macro rail go backwards and forwards. Right, let me just change setting on here. I was photographing cuckoos yesterday so my battery was starting to run a bit low so I changed the um, auto screen off to one minute um, which is rubbish for when you're doing macro photography because you, um, you're faffing around for ages. So it turns out three times is a bit too much so let's put that down at two and a half be a teeny bit closer to the subject. Line it up. Like I said, this bit is the faffy bit. Backwards and forwards. Right, so now I have <laughs> nearly lined up. Yep, that's, that's perfect. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to grab the camera and just sort of show you the setup in a little bit more detail before I do the stack. So, so if we come down here, now you can see you can see the um, you can't really see it that easily. There's a robber fly on the back of the camera. Um, tripod, plamp. See if we go right in here. And there's a robber fly. So, right, let's bang this back over here. So, uh, one of the last piece of kit I need to put on there is a uh, remote release. Really key, because I don't want to be touching the camera when I press the shutter button. So, just to quickly run through settings now. So, um, everything's on manual. Let's just get a test shot working. So uh, I'm on, uh, I'll actually I was on ISO 3200 yesterday from the Cuckoos. So let's drop that, the ISO down to 1600. And what I'm basically doing now is I'm just gonna do a test shot uh, just to make sure I've got the settings right. Just to fine tune the composition a teeny bit. Yeah, that's all good. Um, So I'm shooting at 6, f6.3, um, which is going to give me a reasonable depth of field, but not enough to get the whole robber fly in focus in one photograph. Um, and looking at the exposure meter, that's going to give me a 60th of a second, um, which is not a lot, but it's going to be enough sort of on a, on a tripod system. So just do a test shot. Yep, looks great. Looks perfectly exposed. Oh, there's a dog walker. <laughs> So, um, basically now, so 
what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put my finger in front of the lens, fire a blank, so I know where the stack begins. Um, I'm going to move, use the um, macro rail just to bring the camera back into position. So I just go backwards and forwards till I get the, the frontmost part of the image in focus I want. Take a shot. Move the uh, camera forward a tiny bit, take a shot. And just rinse and repeat. Till I have everything in focus. Nearly there. Yeah, if you shoot at 6.3 at two and a half times magnification, you can you don't have to take that many shots to get everything in focus. If I was shooting at uh, five times magnification and I could only get away with like f4 or something, then you're gonna need more photographs to make sure that they all overlap. So that that's it, that's the stack done. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to fire another blank. And what I have found is quite often, you think it didn't move, the insect that you're photographing, but when you look at the images when you get back, it did. So we're just going to repeat really quickly, just to make sure I've got what I need. literally just moving the dial taking my hand off a camera system leaving it for sort of a couple of seconds just for everything to stabilize and then remote release click voila that is it um camera off um that's time to pack up, go home, have some coffee and see if the stack works. So I will see you uh, back at my house. Cheers. So now I am back in my uh, back in my house and I have the results here from um, that morning's photography. So um, before I go into the actual stacking, so there's um there's just a couple of things to note. So the first one being, remember me talking about um, I'd done one to check that the exposure was right, then I'd fired a blank. So there is the blank, and then I know the first stack starts from there. Um, and if you noticed, I did, I did more than one stack. Now the reason for that being is I'm just going to have a flick through these images here, um, and you can see the depth of field moving through the insect, but I don't know if you just saw there, the, um, the insect's body section started to move. So if you sort of keep going through, you'll see there's another point. It's really sort of twitching up and down. Um, this is why I always do multiple stacks. Um, and then, so there was my next blank, and here is the next sequence starting again. Um, and I always make sure that when I'm starting a stack as well, I you know find I go backwards and forwards till I see the bit nearest to the insect that I wanted in focus, and that's this sort of top leg. So on this first image, the top leg is out of focus. Second image, it's just in focus, um, but it did move the back of the insect again. So basically, um, from this image here is where I'm going to do the stack. So I'm going to do the stack from here. All the way through to there so at that point you you've only just got a, a, again a, ti a tiny bit in fact i'm going to skip that one out because nothing much is in focus there that one yet some of the back hairs are in focus so i'm going to go from there to there so the first thing i want to do before i take these images so at the moment these images are sat in lightroom um is i want to sort of tweak these images a little bit so the first thing I would always do is um, I would enable the profile correction on the lens, um, which doesn't do an awful lot when you're using the Canon MP65, but it just tweaks it a little bit. You can see there's a bit of uh, vignetting disappeared there, um, tiny little bit on the, on the colours. Um, and I'm not going to edit the image that much. I'm going to be really lazy just for the video. I'm going to do Control and U to do a sort of auto tone. And that has gone way overboard on the number of things. So I'm going to bring the highlights back up. 
Um, I'm going to bring the shadows back down, the whites back down. I might as well have just started <laughs> doing it myself. Um, and I'm going to push the exposure up a little bit. So that's where it's got us. So um, that's how it's looking. If I go back to, so I've gone from that to that. Really not very much at all. I'm going to add a tiny little bit of clarity, plus seven. Yep, job done. Not going to push it any more than that. Now, um, I have just, so I've got 12 images selected here, but I've only just changed one. So I need to hit sync. And that is going to paste those same settings over all 12 images. That's done. So what I need to do now is I need to move these images to Lightroom. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to edit in, and I'm going to go to open layers as Lightroom. And hopefully what that will do is it will take these raw files, um, open Lightroom, and it will move all 12 across as individual layers. Let's see what's happening. So that is starting to happen here. So now we're in Photoshop and each one of the layers is going to load in. Now I have got an issue here. So, um, and this seems to be happening on the new version of Lightroom and Photoshop. So what's basically happened is it's loaded one layer in um, it was in the process of sticking the next layer in and it hasn't happened. So I am going to shut Photoshop. Don't save, don't save. So third time lucky, it managed to load all the stacks. So, so what we've got here now is we're in Adobe Photoshop which Adobe please saw. Um, and uh, here is the uh, the robber fly here on this on this perch. And here at the bottom right are the individual um, the individual frames. So the first thing I'm going to do, and this is a really simple process, is just highlight those frames. And then um, even though I was doing this on a tripod and I was using the plamp, there's always going to be a little bit of movement. So um, I am going to go to edit auto align and then click OK. Now this is going to take a little bit of time. So basically um, Photoshop is going to go through each of us. If you imagine that you've got all of those images of a robber fly as individual photographs in front of you on top of each other, it's just basically sorting out the, uh, the pile so they're all lined up. So it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, one thing to notice, though, what I will talk about while it's doing this is you'll have noticed I, you know, I tried to do this photography with as a, a little environmental impact as possible. Um, so, you know, nothing was cut down, etc. Um, I'm one of those people who likes to photograph it wild and free. Um, so it looks like it's nearly there. Yep, it done it. So you see these um, white bits around the edges. Um, that's just where there's been a little bit of movement. So the next section, um, don't have to touch anything else other than go to edit and auto blend. Um, now here, the default, so most people are using blends to do uh, panoramas, uh, but we want to make sure that this radio button here on stack images is checked. Um, and you want to make sure that this little box, seamless tones and colors, that one's checked. And then if anything happened, you know, if the lighting changed at all while we were doing this photography, that will try to look after you. Um, you could do this content aware fill transparent areas, but I, I just leave that. It's, it, the computer has enough processing to do anyway. Um, if I decide I'm going to do that, I will do that afterwards. Um, and it's going to run through. Uh, so basically what it's doing now is Photoshop is just selecting all of the bits which are most in focus. Again, this is going to take a little bit of time. Um, so while it's doing that, I would just say, like I mentioned at the beginning, this is all sort of part of a blog. So um, the blog's going to be on my website, oliverwrightphotography.com. Um, and 
um, there's going to be a whole load more images on that blog because I have been photographing these robber flies a lot over the, uh, the last few weeks. Um, it's really weird. I had been contacted by two scientists first <laughs> about these uh, about these robber flies when people had seen them on Twitter um, because they're they're quite widespread in the UK, but I think they're just generally really hard to find. Uh, but for whatever reason, there is a lot of them around my local pond. So now this is going to take a little while, so I'm probably just going to fast forward the video here till it gets towards the end of doing the stack. So. Voila, it's finished. Um, i just been and done the washing up while it was doing that. So it can take um, it can take a little bit of time. Um, and, you know, this iMac is a fairly powerful iMac, but well for the time. Um, but it is quite old. So it's, um, yeah, late 2015 iMac. Um, but it was quite a high spec at the time. But, yeah, I guess so. it is a five-year-old computer. But anyway, so the stack has happened. Um, like I say, you've got these borders around the edges, and you can see here in the layers, it's built individual layer masks, and that's how it, it, it shows the um, just the sort of the final stacked version. So at the moment, it's weighing in at two point seven eight gigabytes. So let's just have a sort of zoom into the image, um, and that's looking pretty good. We've got sort of all the eye details there um, around the feet here. Looks brilliant. Um, the grass stem looks good, yep, body looks good, so zoom back out, so I mean there's a little bit here where it hasn't worked, um, but I'm going to take the image back to Lightroom in a second, so the last thing to do in Photoshop is right click down over the layers and then flatten the image. You can also do that via the menus as well. So that, that's dropped it from that whatever it was, 2.8 gigabytes to 185 megabytes of the TIFF file. So we just shut that there, save it, and we head back to Lightroom. Lightroom a bit bigger. And here it loads back in the Lightroom. So there it is in Lightroom. So the first thing I'm going to do here over my fans, which are whirring like mad, is just, you know, crop into the image a little bit. I'm going to move that a bit further that way. In fact, I'm going to crop a little bit harder. That's a slightly nicer composition. Uh, maybe a bit more that way. I don't want this uh, tail to be too close to the edge. Yeah, something like that. So, I mean, I've cropped a few pixels out there, but by doing that, I've got rid of this bit on the top of the grass stem that wasn't working. Um, and yeah, that all looks good. And I mean, if yeah, we zoom in, it's looking pretty nice. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So, and we've still got, um, if we look up here, it tells us how many pixels we've got there. So we're still yeah, 6,287 pixels wide. So that would easily do a, you know, a meter print, absolutely no problem. Um, so I'm, again, I'm just going to tweak it slightly. I'm going to make the blacks a little bit blacker, the whites a bit whiter. Um, highlights will keep the same. Push the shadows a tiny bit, maybe just push the exposure a tiny little bit. Um, put the clarity up to about 10. Um, boom, voila, that's, that's it done. I, well, another thing I would just do there, there's a little dust spot or something there, so I'd get rid of that. And that one there, I need to give my sensor a bit of a clean. And also because I shot this at ISO 1600 and I've stacked it, I would just apply just a little bit of noise reduction just to clean it up a little bit. Um, but yeah, that is looking, looking pretty good. So, so there you have the sort of the end-to-end -end process of how I have been photographing all these robber flies. Um, I hope that was useful and like I mentioned a few times before, um, all part of a blog. Um, so check out that blog if you want to sort of see more of these robber fly images. I've been lucky enough to find sort of two on the same grass stalk. I've also done some video of um, when I found two of them on the same grass stalk 
I was photographing them. They woke up. They started. Um, I well watched the video. It's on my YouTube channel. I think be just one or two videos back. But hopefully, hopefully that was useful. And see you on another video. Thank you very much.